Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant which he swear unto thy fathers. As it is this day. The Lord bless his word in Jesus name. Secrets of supernatural supply or supernatural wealth. This will be part two. And because it is the first service, we might call it part 2A. We started this journey on Wednesday at the midweek service. And the objective is to understand the pathway God's pathway to supernatural supply. What does it take to see supply from God? It has been established, at least established last Sunday, that God is a supernatural supplier, a divine provider. We saw how he supernaturally provided for the children of Israel in their journey through the wilderness. But three things must be made very, very clear. First, the whole earth and its fullness belongs to God. The Bible said the earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof. Psalm 24 verse 1. The whole earth and its fullness belongs to God. Next, God empowers his people with his resources. He empowers his people with his resources. That is Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 where we read as text. You shall remember the Lord your God. It is he who gives you power to get wealth. So he can establish his covenant which he swear to his fathers. To their fathers. That is God hands over his wealth to his people. He commits his wealth into the hands of his people. But there is a condition and that's number three. God empowers his people with his resources as they meet his conditions and live by his principles. God empowers his people with his resources as they meet his conditions and live by his principles. It was in Job chapter 37 verse 11 that he said, 36, 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. If, if, if they obey, there is a connection between abundance and obedience. There is a link between Abundance and obedience. There is a connection between his commandment and his consignment for you. So God empowers his people with his resources as they meet 
his conditions and live by his principles. Question is why is it that there are so many children of God who are not where they should be financially and otherwise? In the majority of cases, it is a failure to strictly abide by his principles. We look at some of those keys, some of those demands for supernatural supply, wealth in the midweek service. We started with love for God as number one. And Solomon loved the Lord and that was the beginning of his wealth. Then we move to trust in God. They looked up to him and they were lighting and their faces were not ashamed. We saw how Abraham lifted up his hand, eyes unto God. We looked at that, trust in God. Then we saw faith in God. They that are of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. That's Galatians chapter 3 verse 9. Faith in God. Then we saw walking in knowledge. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuses instruction. Proverbs 13 verse 18. We looked at that. And I will encourage everyone to ensure that you align yourself with these demands. Not just hearing it by head knowledge, but getting into the depth of it. Because a car cannot be functional. If the engine is in shape and the tire is not in place. If the engine is good, tire is good and there is no battery. There are people who, who know some things to do. But there are many things they don't know. There are those who say, I have done everything to the best of my knowledge. And, and you are correct. You did it to the extent you know. So there are things you need to know. That is why it's not good to select which service to come and which message to listen to. You don't know the service that will change your story. You don't know the one that holds the key that you are looking for. So I employ everyone to align yourself strictly this month to the services and let your life change. So we are moving on to the next point and that will definitely be point number five. Meaning is that if you hadn't listened to the previous ones, just pick them up and go through them so you can follow us. Number five is the act of giving. The act of giving. Life is all about giving and receiving. Genesis chapter 8 verse 20 to 22. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. That is for as long as this earth remains, if there is a giving, there must be a receiving. If there is a time of sowing, there must be a time of reaping. The only time that law will fail is when you wake up and there is no more earth. See time and harvest. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 to 8, it makes the same clear. He said, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly, shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man 
according as he purposed in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, let him give because he who sows sparingly shall reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully shall reap bountifully. The quality of giving affects the quality of receiving. Let me emphasize again that all of life is governed by the law of giving and receiving all of life. We give carbon dioxide which is not good for us to receive oxygen. <laughs> Am I communicating? We give out carbon dioxide. We give out carbon dioxide. There is nobody who wants to survive with carbon dioxide. So that we can receive oxygen. That's why the Bible said it's more blessed to give than to receive. Because in your giving, you are receiving something that is at a higher level than what you gave. You gave, you gave carbon dioxide. Which if it remained in your body will, will, will kill you. To receive oxygen. Listen. And the plants receive the carbon dioxide that you gave. And they use it to manufacture carbohydrate by the process of photosynthesis. To produce food for man. And the giving cycle continues. When a person is too dignified to give out oxygen, he's about to be decorated in the mortuary to give out carbon dioxide. I'm too big, I can't imagine. Who is telling me to give? And moment comes when psh, no breathing anymore. That is in the, in the mortuary. There is a place around the east, the Middle East, I mean around Israel that, that, that is called the Dead Sea that Dead Sea has no inflow of water into it and no outflow it receives no water, it releases no water it's just on its own and there is no life inside it, nothing alive is, lives in it no fish, nothing that lives stays there because where giving and receiving is over, life is gone. Nothing alive is inside the dead sea. Nothing. He receives nothing, gives nothing. So nothing survives there. Is God speaking to anybody here? Say amen. So giving and receiving is not a doctrine of church. It's, not, it's, it's, it's all about life. There may be those who ask you to give because they want to take what you are giving. But that is not, that is not why we are here. I will say more in subsequent services. Now, what is the focus of giving? Giving is, in, is directed two ways. Number one, towards God. And number two, towards man. Towards God. There is a basic giving towards God that is called the tithes. In Leviticus chapter 27 verse 30, he said, all the tithe of the land whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. 
all. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 8 he said here men that die receive tithes but there he receiveth them. He's still receiving tithes there of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. That's a giving towards God. Another one is called a free will offering. I'm not elaborating and emphasizing on this today because it's a subject on its own that I'm sure that will dedicate a service to. Givings. The free will offering is the one we come before God and in Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 17, verse 16 and 17, every man 16, it says three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose in the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of weeks and in the feast of tabernacles and they shall not appear before me empty. It's a love offering. Verse 17 says, every man shall give as he is able according to the blessing of the Lord thy God which he has given thee. That is free will offerings we give when we come for service. The offering that will be taken. There is another one called the sacrifice. Psalm 126 verse 1 to 6. When the Lord again turned the captivity of Zion, we, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams of, in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Sacrifice can, be, can involve givings towards projects, involve givings as the Lord lays in your heart to sacrifice. Like I said, we shall be back to deal extensively with the diverse kinds of givings and their implications. So we have tithes, we have free will offerings, we have sacrifices, etc. What of giving towards man? The first type of giving towards man is the poor. Those who are less privileged. In Proverbs chapter 19 verse 17, scripture said, he that has pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. And that which he has given will he pay him again. I hope that the clip of the infrastructural development we did recently last weekend is available just for the church to see what happened. The poor. Every time you see somebody who is underprivileged, God has given you an opportunity for a lifting. If only you can touch their lives. Another one is the hired servant. Those that worked for you. Deuteronomy chapter 24 verse 15. He said. Verse 14 and 15. He said. Thou shalt not oppress a hired servant or a, a, a laborer who works for you that is poor and needy. Whether he be of thy brethren or thy stranger that are in thy land within thy gates. At his day. Thou shalt give him his hire. Neither shall the sun go down upon it. For he is poor. And setteth his heart upon it. Lest he cry against thee unto the Lord. And it be seen unto thee. Don't cheat those who work for you. I'll come to that shortly. Hired servant. Number three is the family. Your wife, your children. Loved ones. Your givings towards them affect your welfare on it. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 8 He said But if any provide not for his own Especially for those of his own house He has denied the faith He is worse than an atheist Infidel, that's atheist A godless man is worse than an atheist Brothers are suffering, sisters are suffering Children are suffering, wife is crying And yet you have money or yet you have some means. It cuts off your destiny financially in God. Giving to us man also includes the priest of the prophet. Again, like I said, we'll come to that generally. Genesis chapter 2 verse 2, he said, um, 
sorry, Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. Um, and I will make of thee a great, verse 3, and I will bless them that bless you. Abraham was called a prophet. God said, anyone who releases blessing in his direction will receive blessing in return. So we have given towards God and given towards man. We have not exhausted the givings at all because there are various avenues that God provided in order to change our lives. We'll come to that. So this is the act of giving. Number six is the act of service. Serving God. Working for God. Is a channel of supernatural supply. Exodus 23 and in verse 25, he said, And you shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless your bread and your water and I will take sickness away from the midst of you if you will serve me God is saying I will bless you if I don't beg you to serve me you won't beg me to bless you you shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless. Luke chapter 22 verse 35. When Jesus sent his disciples, he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and scrip and shoes, Lacked he anything and they said nothing. Did you lack anything when I sent you? They said we lack nothing. When he sends you, he pays you. If he employs you, he empowers you. Listen. The scriptures make it clear that there is no service without reward. There is no service without reward. There is no labor without profit. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 23. He said, In all labor, there is profit. Le including labor for the kingdom, labor for God, there is profit. But ordinary talk tends to poverty. And you know that as it is in the physical, so it is in the spiritual. In the civil service, civil servants labor. They give their service to the government and they are remunerated. They have salaries, they have housing allowances, medical allowances and so on. Because they labor. And how many of you know that God said... So Nobody should use anybody's labor without paying them. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 22, verse 23. Look at what he said. Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 33. All right, let me let me take Deuteronomy twenty four fifteen, where we read. He said, "At his day, you shall give him his hire. Neither shall the sun go down upon it, for he is poor, and setteth his heart upon it." God is saying, "If you employ anybody, pay them." Don't use people and not pay them. The God who said that that human beings shouldn't do that, will he do that? I'm asking a question. If God said you employ somebody, don't let him go empty-handed. If God says somebody labored and worked for you, don't cheat him. 
chapter 2. Verse 13. Say, warn to him that builded his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by wrong, that he uses his neighbor's service without wages. That God who said this, will he use your, your services and not pay you? From the day one of this ministry, I decided to keep myself off salary. From the church officially, which, and it's not wrong, it's not wrong at all. If, because, I mean, the, 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 the husband man that laborate is worthy of his hire. If a pastor is on a salary from a church, nothing wrong with it at all. But it was my personal decision. And the God who doesn't owe a man has not owed me. In fact, what he pays me, if I ask the church to pay it, the church, the church people, I mean, it will, it will, it will cause problem. This is what God pays me a month. Can you people fix it for me as salary? It's a challenge, major challenge. Please don't sit down in church and do nothing. Enough is enough of being a decorated Christian. Just for, I mean Christian for decoration purpose. The act of service. And finally for this morning, walking in integrity is secret of supernatural supply. Genesis chapter 14 verse 21 all the way to verse 23. Genesis chapter 14 verse 21 to verse 23. Abraham returned from the slaughter. Returned from battle with the kings that came against Sodom and Gomorrah. And the king of Sodom said unto Abraham, Give me the persons and take the goods to yourself. And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand to the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth. That I will not take from a tread even to a shoe lashet. And that I will not take anything that is yours. In case you say I have made Abraham rich. I won't take anything that is yours. It's a principle of supernatural supply. I won't touch, take anything that belongs to another man. It's a principle of increase. I am not going to have it if it is not mine. It's a principle. Job chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. You see the story of Job. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. Did you see the, verse 1? There was a man. He was Job. He was perfect upright, feared God, eschewed evil. He became the greatest. In verse 10, God was talking, Satan was talking to God. He said, have you not made a hedge about him, about his house, about all that he has on every side? Have you not blessed the work of his hands? And his substance is increased in the land. This point number seven is where the problem of many people lie. Including Christians. Job was the most righteous and he was the richest. He had integrity, he had prosperity. Why did the devil lie to our generation that until a person is dubious, he can't be rich? Why 
things that we they, they do. We, we have been made to believe that until a person does something funny, he can't be rich. He can't be enriched by God. Abraham, the wealthiest in his generation, said, I will not take anything that is yours. Please note the following. First, what God has not given you. Does not add anything to your life. It's not a plus. For example, Adam got a fruit and lost a whole garden. What God has not given you is not a plus. Second, blessedness and crookedness can never coexist. Blessedness and crookedness can never coexist. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. Thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor will you compass him about us with a shield. Psalm 5 and in verse 12. Bless, you can't be crooked and be blessed. They are mutually exclusive. They are diametrically opposed. The devil uses fraudulent means to cut off people's destinies. You can't be crooked and be blessed at the same time. Thirdly, there are things people eat today at the expense of their future. There are things people eat today at the expense of their future. That is, by that action, their future ended. There was a man by the name Achan. In Joshua chapter 7 verse 24 to verse 26, Achan touched what Israel was not meant to touch. He stole a Babylonish garment, a wedge of gold. Joshua pulled him out and all Israel with him and they took Achan. Why hast thou troubled us? Now, you, you jump too fast from verse 24. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan the son of Zerah and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold. They brought out his sons and his daughters, his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Acre. And Joshua said, why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned thee with stones and burnt them with fire. After they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore the name of that place was called the valley of Acorn unto this day. The wedge of gold, the silver, and the Babylonish garment he carried did not benefit him. He ended his future and ended his generation the same day. Everything that came out of Achan ended one day because he touched what he was not meant to touch. There are things we eat today that cut off the future of our children. There are people who are suffering today because of what their fathers ate yesterday. It, it takes the mercy of God and understanding of scriptures to break such curses and yokes. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? And in Nigeria, they give you all manner of opportunities to cause your destiny. Okay, what do I write on the receipt? No, let, let me, uh, just, 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 just pay this amount and let's just forget the rest. That is a system set up to attack people's future by 
bad financial operations. There are things people eat today that close their future. And finally, number four, crooked practices attract the curse of God. Crooked practices, they attract the curse of God. Crooked and fraudulent practices. In Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 11, you know the scripture. He said, as the partridge sits on eggs and hatches them not, so is he that getteth riches and not by right. He gets it by hook or crook. He shall leave them in the midst of his days and at his hand he shall be a fool. <laughs> he get that riches not by right, by chua chua. No manner of, just, just, just all manner of arrangement. They sent you to buy things. You are making deals out of the, what, what they send you. If those kind of deals deal with you. They deal with your life. Deal with your future. And there are people who put the temptation for you. How much shall we add to the amount of the speaker or the air condition or the amount of whatever they sent you from you? How much should we add? Just help us. Your, your, your share is covered. Your interest is protected. All manner of dubious language. There are those who ate a lot of bribes while they are in office. Under one month, they are looking for 100,000. These are people who ate millions. They are looking, looking for where to beg 50,000. One of the young men here told me he says he's about to resign from his work in government. And I, and I was asking him to find out. He said, well, what he has established for himself, a private business is doing very well. What he's paying his manager is higher than what they are paying him in his office. And then he said the second thing. He said, and number two, <laughs> God has protected me so far from touching bad money. He said, if I go beyond the level I am now, I may be forced to compromise here and there. And I'm not ready for that. He said, there are people who ate a lot of money while they were with them. They have retired since. Those people are looking for money. They are begging for money now. God will make you rich. God will empower you. And it will come clean. It will come neat. Say it louder. Amen. Avoid all forms of fraud and cheating. When we are talking about financial integrity, all forms of fraud, you, you do business. There are people you can never do business with and the testimony is clear. I'm not talking of unbelievers, people in church. There must be a story at the end. There must be a story at the end. All forms of corrupt financial practices, sharp, sharp, sharp practices, dishonest gain, Mix petrol, mix something, mix, mix you want to increase profit. <laughs> you know, my, my wife told me, say that, that, is, that, that uh, there are different kinds of amala. There is some that is pure uh, uh, yam, and there are others that have been mixed. All forms of what people are make, doing business now on the internet. The, 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 one pastor sent me a text the other day say a young man who repented from internet fraud uh, he just gave his life to Christ he has like three or some, three point something million in his account that he dealt with people to get he said now nah, he doesn't know what to do with the money he can't touch it the pastor said what should he do I said since he dealt with people to get the money and he may not know who he got the money from he should look for people that are stranded and frustrated and looking for food to eat and use all the money to feed them and then face his life. He shouldn't use that money to do anything. Will you buy a car with that kind of money and survive it? Hallelujah. Blood 
money, ritual money. Some demon agents are calling themselves kidnappers, making so that's no, there can be no future from money you got by putting other people's life under pressure. No future, no future negotiating on the head of a human being, evil, evil, and such evil have no future. As I'm preaching now, I'm conscious of the fact that there are those whose consciences may have pricked them so much. I'm not preaching to condemn you. I'm just preaching to let you know that these things can attack your future. And what Jesus told that woman that was caught in adultery is the only thing that scripture tells everybody in that category. Go and sin no more. Ask for mercy. Lord, any money that entered my hand, anything I touched, I took, that may have attacked my future and the future of my next generation, I am sorry. The last one shall be the last. If you give me the grace, try me again. I will be clean. I will be neat. And under no temptation. If he's trying to come out for the altar call, you find out from me. Maybe it's a 419 or something who is touched by the message. Hallelujah. This is my counsel as we close. Number one, line up with the principles of God to access the provisions of God. Line up with the principles of God to access the provisions of God. Number two, refuse to follow the multitude to err. The fact that everyone is doing it does not make it right. That everyone is doing the wrong thing doesn't make the wrong thing to become right. Line up with the principles of God to access the provisions of God. Refuse to follow the multitude to err. Finally, Endeavor to embrace all of the secrets of supernatural supply. Embrace them. Embrace them, be in all the services as much as you. In fact, be in all the services. Go through all the messages. Embrace them. When you excel at a couple of these principles, it doesn't make any difference. I mean, you, 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 you have done everything where you give tight, but you also eat bribe. You, you, know, you do this, but you also do that. It doesn't, it's plus one minus one. It's zero. You know? So it is important that we access all these principles together and the Lord shall help us. Every time you see God rain upon us, word like this is because he wants to change our story. I heard just now as I was coming on the road that the hour, there is an hour of visitation for somebody. Stand upon your feet with a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and lift up your voice and let's appreciate God. Let's appreciate him. Let's honor him. Let's adore him. Let's worship him. Father, thank you. 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 Let go seco preta si calata frata casha coco la racata cacasa calayada yada 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 yada